Uh, the next presenter here we have is Nanda Kumar. Nanda Kumar is the whole time director at Octave. Uh, you know, after post-graduation, Nanda Kumar joined Hokte for Man uh, before assisting, uh, you know, to set the India operation here in 1996. Uh, he's, he was the, he's still, you know, he's, he was the ex-MD uh, managing director in 2007. He took over that role and now he's in the board of Octave India. I welcome Nanda Kumar to give us uh, some insight on BIM effective application in construction. Thank you very much, Vijay. <clears throat> I think I have to add a few more words of introduction. The first thing is that I'm an old man. And the second one is that I'm working for the construction industry. And these two words I would like to take as a disclaimer. <clears throat> the construction industry has always have the, the dubious reputation of being late or the last one in adopting new technologies. And um, <clears throat> when I started my career in about 30, 32 years ago, or 35 years ago, when Autodesk came out with AutoCAD, uh, the resistance the industry has given to that product for adoption is, is now a history. <clears throat> we believe, the construction industry, we believe that, you know, we are, once in, once in a while, we are encountered with the emergence of knew some wild technical animals. And that Autodesk came out with the, their animal of AutoCAD, and now we are facing a new animal called BIM. We in South India, we like elephants. <clears throat> and we have heard so many acronyms, so many you know, new names which is being adopted by the industry today. So I would like to add one more to that. And then we call this animal, BIM, as BIM fat. It's, it's mainly because elephant is the largest animal we all know. Um, uh, that is the largest animal on the surface of this earth. We all know the story of the six blind men who went to have an experience of an elephant. You know. And I think BIM fat is not any different. It is various things. It can do various things according to the perce perception and use of, of the client or the user. My task today <clears throat> is to introduce what the BIM firm can do in the, in the precast industry. My sort of life today has been substantially reduced because of the beautiful and wonderful uh, presentation Kef uh, has given today morning and also what Rahul has <coughs> said in the afternoon about the challenges what uh, the construction industry is facing. When we talk about the, the precast industry, since the, the, the presentation today morning was wonderful, I would like to, to so, uh, show on a few slides the process that is involved uh, in the, in the uh, this one. This one is for the next slide. So I think uh, there are three, three steps or uh, oh. I go to the last one. Can you help me with this? Oh yeah, I think it's, it's coming. Next one, please. This one is not working. Can you go to the next slide? Yeah, uh, the step one, Rahul also said about, you know, <clears throat> for a success of uh, the adoption of BIM, we should have uh, efficient modelers. And we always, I always say that, you know, whatever we have seen today, fantastic videos, movies, and everything, and those, those are all, you know, Hollywood stuff. And the work we do, especially in the construction industry, is the dirty work. And we do the dirty work of making whatever the technical designs of this thing into workable models. And we, we, we use civil engineers and MEP engineers to do the models. So first of all, we have to, to clean the model. 
We have to first generate a model, then clean the model, split the models into, into different elements. We have to split that, you know, the, the vertical elements level-wise, the horizontal elements pore-wise. Then um, <clears throat> I'll, I'll add the tags to it. Then, uh, you know, all project-specific uh, Revit templates should be adopted. All pore level and uh, level references have to be included into the model and scheduling parameters to these vertical elements and so on. I mean, you know, I don't want to, to go into the details. Uh, please, next one. The step two will be in you know, the calls, walls, upstand, balconies are roughly split based on the crane capacity. And that is where the engineering comes in. You know, the engineer who is preparing these, these elements, these specific elements, he has to find out what would be the lifting capacity of that crane, then split the model to suit the lifting capacity, then clean the model and parse the model, add all the reinforcement details into the, into the uh, elements. I have a problem with this. Generate all the GA drawings, columns and wall upstand drawings, Generate all unit drawings for assemblies. Anyway, there's something wrong. And then, you know, uh, prepare all the, all the bar bending schedules, then uh, provide all this information to the client. And, you know, uh, basically we are working with clients in UK where the precast industry is becoming more and more uh, uh, being used in the industry, especially in cities like London where it is totally congested. Um, it saves our time, you know, a project that can be completed on the conventional way in two years. It can be completed in, in say, 18 months, a huge saving. Uh, not only at the precast industry, we use uh, uh, 3D modeling and detailing also on uh, um, the traditional casting site of projects. And here we, it's, it's mainly for two reasons. <clears throat> to visualize the, the, the sort of, you know, the whole arrangement of reinforcement bars in the concrete and check in differences with MEP items, built-in parts, to check the, the Interference of you know foundation of, of top top reinforcement with the fire start bars, a lot of details, and I, I'm I'm not sure whether I'm getting boring here for you. So I and I, I was told that you know I'm running short of time, so I'll, I'll skip the details. My colleagues are here. If somebody have some questions, they'll be able to to answer that. But one huge project in the Middle East, which I need to to refer to here where BIM was used for a totally different purpose. That is this uh, project here. It's a project in Doha. This was the, the BIM model we have created, the reinforcement model we have created according to the design. Um, I have to thank Nicholas for mentioning that, you know, the construction, the construction industry, normally the margins is only one or two percent. I think that should be the the heading of all, every newspaper tomorrow. I don't know why Autodesk is charging us more and more every year for their product, you know, <clears throat> knowing that it is only one or two percent. But change orders, we love it. <clears throat> the construction industry love it, and that is where we make the money. Here on this one, after modeling, we could establish that the concrete could not pass through the reinforcement, which made the designer to redesign it. The contractor on site allowed it because he could ask for, you know, <clears throat> additional time and associated costs. So we, we use BIM for, for different reasons, for different purposes. We also create databases for facility management. You know, here, um, what you call here, that, that boiler here, when you click on that element, gives all the parameters, who is the manufacturer, who is the local vendor, what is the, the, the maintenance period. All kinds of information can be obtained from the, from the model by the click of a mouse. 
Um, this is the, the, somebody was mentioning about the Riyadh Metro. This is the MEP services for the Riyadh Metro. Uh, so clash detections. These are basically to support contractors. We also create all the COBE database. I mean, all of you might know what COBE, are, COBE stands for. And uh, COBE is, is a sort of uh, a format <coughs> which, which have to follow uh, uh, certain you know, parameters in certain formats so that every user can use it. We create all those databases, attach all those databases to the model. So various things we do in BIM. In the Indian context, while on the Indian context, I feel that our BIM friend is still an infant. And mainly, uh, and, and uh, we, the industry, need to teach this infant to walk, to dance according to our you know, tunes, not only to, to walk and dance, but to perform on a tightrope trapeze in the in these circles of construction. After teaching the, uh, the, this infant how to dance on a tightrope trapeze, we have to convince him that it is able to perform and make him perform. But the most challenging task would be to make the others to pay for his performance. Fortunately, I've seen that you know there are industry who has come forward, like KEF today morning, who has made that infant to dance according to their tunes and pay for it. I would like to showcase one project where it's another project here in Dehradun. <clears throat> the, the architectural drawings were, or, or the, the conceptual design was provided by the Spanish designer, which was adopted by, by an architect based out of Delhi. And subsequently, it was adopted by another consultant who did the structural design, all the MEP designs, did all the clash detections, <clears throat> produced all the uh, issued for construction drawings, including the, the specifications, attached, attached the, the program to the model, and came out with all the documents where the client could go out for tendering, uh, inviting tenders. And the project is nearing completion. The name of the project is Andara Senior Living in Dehradun. And I'm proud that it is Hockcliffe India who was that consultant who did all these tasks. You know. There are other BIM services that are being offered by Hockcliffe India to the construction industry, which is listed here. And I believe that this will be efficiently and effectively demonstrated in the next video, which is following this. Can you run the video, please? I don't know whether the video will be more boring or the music will be boring, but sorry. Thank you. 
very tiny. I don't know whether first is the fifth dimension, but that's what the industry used now. So you can see here the time frame and the cost. Space management. Facility management details. Asset integration. These are the services uh, what we are offering. So uh, the very reason I am standing here and the very reason I am wearing this shirt shows that uh, the backbone of whatever we are servicing is Autodesk products and uh, our association with Autodesk is on a global basis. Um, and we thank Autodesk for all the support we are getting. I still don't understand being a non-technical person why the company asked me to come and give this presentation. And I think uh, the only reason is that I will not be able to answer any of your questions. Because, uh, you know, then I always have to say that, yeah, please, please send the questions to me. This is my email ID. I will ask my technical team to, to send this to me. I didn't want to have that freedom. So I made six of them to come along with me. There are six engineers here. So if you have any questions, don't use the acronym they have used today morning, you know, the shotgun. Use that shotgun to shoot the questions to them. Thank you very much. Thanks, Nanda. Thanks so much.